In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this emblem style logo design using Affinity Designer. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Affinity Designer works, be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I'll do in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me whenever you need it. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So the first step is to create a new document. So I'm going to press Command N to create a new document. And I'm going to size my document at 1,000 by 1,000 pixels, and I will click Create. Then I want to come up here and enable the snapping icon, which is represented by this magnet depiction. And then I'm going to grab my Circles and Ellipses tool, and I'm going to snap the cursor over here to the center of the page. And you'll know you'll have it snapped to the center of the page when you see the vertical and horizontal guides being activated. And then I'll hold Command and Shift and click and drag to draw a circle that goes about halfway through the page like that. Now I'm going to grab my artistic text tool and I want to place some text on top of this circle. But to do that, I'm going to have to hover the cursor over the edge of the circle's path. And if you notice when I do that, the cursor icon changes to a letter T with a squiggly line underneath it. And once you see that, you can go ahead and click on the path, and that's how you will be able to put text on that path. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to create a fictitious logo called Austin Brewing Company. So I'm going to type that in. And I want to make it so that my text goes over the top of the circle and is centered. So to arrange that, I'm going to grab this green handle right here and snap this to the left edge. And then I'll take this orange handle and snap that to the right edge. And that tells Affinity Designer where the start and the end point of the text should be. And I'm going to press Command A to select all of the text so I have it all highlighted. And then I will choose to center align it. And that'll put it directly in the center on top of the circle. So for this design, I'm going to work with a different font. So I'll come up here to my font selector. And the font I'm using is called Lee Gothic. I'll choose that font. There we go. Any sans style font should work. You don't necessarily have to use this one. And I want to make the size of this larger. So I'll change this, uh, this size setting up here to something like 72. And I want to place the text going halfway through the path rather than sitting on top of it. So to do that, I'm going to change the baseline percentage. I'll move this up to about 35%. And then I want to put some spacing between these letters. So to do that, I'm going to hold my Option key, or that would be Alt if you're on Windows, and press the right arrows repeatedly to put some spacing between those letters. Now I'd like my, my text to go further down than the halfway point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the star point and move this down here to the bottom left quadrant. It should snap when it gets there. And I'll do the same thing to this handle over here. I'll take the end point and move that to the bottom right quadrant. And then I will continue spacing out my text. And that is the effect that I'm going for right there. Now that that's done, let me grab my selection tool and zoom out. Click off of the object to deselect everything. And now I'm going to put a circle going through the center here. So let me grab my circle tool again. And I'm going to snap to the center of the page. Click and drag and then hold Command and Shift to scale out from the center. Just like that. And then I'm going to make this a shade of orange. That looks pretty good. And I want to position this beneath the text. So I'm going to come over here to the Layers menu and just click and drag that down there to the bottom like that. And then I'm going to grab my Selection tool. Let me first select the text and make it white. And then I'll select the orange circle again. And I'm going to hold Command and Shift and scale this down a little bit so it's hugging, the, it's hugging a little closer to the text. And now I'm going to create another circle going in here. So let me press Escape to deselect everything. Grab the Circle tool again. We're going to snap to the center of the canvas. Hold Command and Shift. Bring the circle about that far. And I'm going to use a lighter shade for this inner circle. So I'll go with something like that. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little darker. And then I'll grab my selection tool. And again, I want to make sure I have this closer. We're looking for roughly an equal amount of space between this size right here and this size right here. We want equal padding going around the text. And that looks pretty good as it is. And now I'm going to create a larger blue circle going in the back. So I'm just going to, instead of drawing another circle, I'm going to take the circle down here at the bottom and I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And then I'll take the bottom one and I'll make that a dark shade of blue. And let me just hold command and shift and scale that out. And I'm just going to tweak this shade until it's something closer to what I'm going for. That right there looks pretty good. 
And now I'll zoom out. And now I'm going to put some decorative lines going in the center of the emblem, as you see that I've done here in my thumbnail design. So to do that, let me deselect everything. And I'm going to grab the pen tool, which is over here. And I will snap to the center vertically like that. Click to add a point, hold shift, bring the line straight down. Click to add another point, press enter to close the path. And now I want to make the stroke color white. And then I'll come over here to the stroke tab and increase the weight of that a little bit. Now my line isn't quite as long as I'd like it to be. So let me grab the nodes tool and I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit just to make it a little longer. And now I'll go back to my selection tool. I'm gonna hold the option key or the alt key if you're on Windows and click and drag to make a copy of the line and then hold shift to lock it onto the vertical axis and bring it down here so that we have two lines here. And then I'll hold shift and select both of these. I'm gonna group them together by pressing command G. And then I just wanna make sure that I have them centered vertically and horizontally. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the layers menu. I'm gonna right click on this group and go to duplicate. And then I'll take this rotation handle up here. I'll hold shift and I'll click and drag this clockwise two steps. So this is one, two, and then I'll release the click and then I'll press command J repeatedly to make more copies of that. Now what I'll do is I'll select everything here. I'm gonna hold shift, rotate this one step clockwise so that we no longer have the lines going vertically. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna create a smaller line in this space. If you notice, these lines here alternate between larger and smaller. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna grab my pen tool again. And just like we did previously, I'm gonna create another set of lines, only this time I'm gonna make them a little smaller. And that right there is the effect I'm going for. So I'm just gonna repeat this process. Uh, hold the Option key or Alt and just bring this down like that. Select both of these by holding Shift. Group them together with Command G or Control G. And again, make sure it's centered vertically and horizontally. And we'll repeat this process again over here. Right click the object in the Layers menu, go to Duplicate, and then take this rotation handle, hold Shift, move it clockwise two steps, and then Command J repeatedly until we end up with something like that right there. Now I'll click and drag over all of these lines so we have them all selected. And I will go to Layer and choose Ungroup All. And I want to combine them all together. So I'll come up here to the Layer menu again, go to Geometry and select Merge Curves. And now we have them as a single object and you can change all of their sizes easily like that. And that just makes it a little more convenient. I'm going to scale this up a little bit so it's closer to the edge of the circle. And that looks pretty good. Let me take the text right here. I'm gonna take this white text and I'm gonna place a blue outline going around the back of it. So with the text selected, I'll come over here to the Quick Effects tab and I want to choose this option over here that says Outline. Let me click on that to enable it. And I wanna make the outline the same color of blue that we used previously. So let me click on this color stripe and I'm gonna use this dropper. I'm gonna click and drag it over a portion of the blue color that we wanna use and then click on that color disc to apply it. And now we have the blue outline and we can just increase the radius until we get a, an outline that we like, which I think that looks pretty good right there. Now I'm going to import some design elements. If you notice here, I have this icon of um, some hops. So to apply that, let me click off of it to deselect everything. I'll come back over here to my layers menu. I'm gonna use the built-in stock menu to retrieve that design element. So I'll come up here to the window tab or the window menu and I'm going to choose stock and it has my previous entry in there. Let me remove that. I wanna make sure I have Pixabay chosen and I wanna enable the vector option right here. And I'm gonna search for HOPS and press enter and it's this design right here. So I'm just gonna click and drag this onto the center of the canvas, and there we have the design like that. Now the problem with this design is that it's an embedded document, so we can't edit the color or the elements of this design as it is right now. We'll have to go into the embedded document to do that. So to do that, let me double click on the object in the tab in the layers menu over there, and now we can edit this as needed. So I wanna make this black color the same color of blue that we worked with previously. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna choose that blue shade from my color picker. And then I will come down here to the green elements and I will make those white. And now what I can do is I can select everything or you know what, I'll have to come over here to the layers menu and hold shift and select both objects. Right click, go to copy and then come over here 
And there we actually no, we don't have to paste it. It's already the changes are already applied. So I was going to paste that in there, but it already updated the uh, colors in real time. So that's good. One less step. So next we're going to import the skyline. This is the Austin skyline. We're going to use the same process here. Let me remove my previous query and type in Austin and press enter. And there is the element I'm looking for. I'll click and drag that. Or you know what? Let me come back into my logo document. I'll click and drag that onto the canvas. And again, we're going to have to repeat this same, uh, this same step. I'm going to double click the icon in the layers menu to open it in a new tab. And for this one, we'll need to copy and paste it in because I'm going to have to make some edits to this one. So let me make this one the same shade of blue that I wanted. And now I will right click it and go to copy. And I can close out of this tab now and close out of this one as well because we don't need them anymore. In fact, I can just delete this because we don't need that. And now I'm just going to press Command V to paste that in there or Control V if you're on Windows. And let me just let me turn off snapping. That's just going to get in the way at this point. And if you notice the way that this design is laid out, this left side of the skyline is getting in the way. So I'm going to remove that. Let me close out of the stock tab. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle going over that portion of the skyline. Hold shift and select both objects and then just subtract them using the Boolean operations. And then I'm going to place this design, I'm going to place this skyline up, up roughly about where I'd like it to be relative to the rest of the design. So I'm going to have to scale it up and down and reposition it as needed. I may even have to move this design around as well. I'm going to flip that to get a better, or you know what, I like that orientation better. I'm going to make, I'm going to flip this one horizontally. That looks better. Make that a little larger. Bring that down a little more. And if you notice, this doesn't really cover, the blue skyline doesn't cover all of the open space over here. So I'm going to grab my nodes tool and just select those nodes and bring them down. There we go. And now to trim off this protruding area, I'm going to hold shift and click on the large blue circle in the background and with them both selected, I'll come over here to my shape builder tool. I'm going to choose the subtract option and then just click on that element and now it's removed. And another thing I want to do is, if you notice these white lines, I'm going to select them. These white lines are in the way of the skyline. So I'm going to delete the white lines out of there that are overlapping with that. So let me grab my nodes tool and I'm going to hold shift and I'm only going to select the nodes that I want to delete. So while holding shift, I'm just clicking and dragging over them. And then I'll press the delete key on the keyboard and now they're gone. So the next step, we're going to add some text in here. If I come back over here to the original design, you can see I had some subtext in there, the EST text. So let me come back in here. Let me grab my text tool, click and drag to draw some text. I'm just going to write EST. I'm going to place this over the document so I can see it. And I will grab my text tool again. And I just want to select all of the text. And I'm going to change the font to the font I'm using for this one is called Serona Script. You can use any cursive style font you'd like. It all works the same. And I'm just going to hold my option key and use the left arrow key to bring the text, bring the letters a little closer together or the kerning as it's called. And if you're on Windows, that would be the alt key. I'm going to place this in the center. Let me center that up. Let me center it vertically like that. And I'm going to make a copy of this by holding option or alt and clicking and dragging. And I'll press T to grab my text tool. And for this one, I'm just going to write in the number two zero. On the left side, I'm going to have two zero and the right side will be two five. Move that a little closer. And I'm going to let me press escape to deselect everything. I'm going to grab my pen tool and draw a line going over the top here. So I'm going to hold shift like that. And I want to make this line a smaller width. And I'll put another line, another line beneath it. So I'll hold option, click and drag, bring this straight down. And then I'll select all three of these elements and then just again, holding option, click and drag over here to the right. And I can just adjust this as needed. And I'm going to grab my text tool and change this from zero to five. And that was much easier. Okay, so let me select this and let me just size this up a little better. You can just size and reposition it. That looks pretty good. And the final step, if you notice, I have a white border going around the entire design. 
So to add that border, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the original blue border down here at the bottom. And then I'll come over here to my Quick Effects tab and I wanna apply an outline and increase the radius of that until it's large enough as I like it. And the outline is black by default, but I'm gonna change it to white. And now we can't see it because it's up against a white canvas. So, so in order to make it visible, I'm gonna apply an outer shadow. So I will enable the outer shadow setting down here, or not the outer glow, the outer shadow. Let me try that again. Outer shadow, there we go. And let me bring the opacity up. Let me put the angle at 270 so it's going straight down and bring the radius up like that. And then I'll just give it a little bit of an offset so that the shadow's coming out of the bottom more than the other sides. And I wanna make the shadow the same color as the blue shade that I use just because it adds a nice touch. So let me click on the color stripe, use the dropper to sample a, a portion of that blue shade and then apply that. And there we go. Just like that, we have created our emblem logo design. Now, one last thing I'd like to point out, if you select everything and you try to scale it down, if you notice, I'm holding Command and Shift to scale it down. You notice the text is not, the text is distorting as I do that. And that's because the text is still on the path. If you want to scale your logo up and down, make sure you use the, lar the node on the outside over here on the bottom right. You wanna use this node and then hold Command or Control, and then you'll be able to scale this while preserving the text in its place. So let me undo that, and there you go. That's just one important thing that I wanted to point out. That should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can create a, an emblem style logo design using Affinity Designer. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.